You love this effect in Premiere Pro, so now let's do it in Final Cut Pro. I shot these images once again on my Canon A1 in Portugal. Let's begin. Final Cut Pro, you're gonna go to Preferences first, and you're gonna adjust in the Editing tab your still image duration to the lowest possible. This didn't work for me, as you'll see later in the tutorial, but I'll show you a little workaround. Go to New Project and create a 1080p timeline with 25 or 30 frames a second, depending on where you live and what you're used to. First, hit Option W to insert some black space into the timeline, and then you're gonna drag your photos in the order that you want. I am just kind of randomly putting these into position. Once that is done, I am going to hit Control D and hit 15 on the numerical keyboard because I want them to be 15 frames long. You're gonna adjust the duration with Control D. Then Alt and drag those photos upwards so you duplicate them and then minus five to shift them back five frames and then you can delete the start of that empty space. And now we're good to go. Almost though. We will first increase the scale of all these photos by a couple of points so they fill the 1080p because the photos are obviously not in the same aspect ratio. Go to your second photo on the top timeline bit and go to your effects tab and drag the draw mask on there. Then you're going to, just like we did in Premiere Pro, use the pen tool to draw around our subjects. And once again, you'll see that I'm really shit at this. <laughs> I need to uh, get better at figuring out these things, but uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's another tutorial where I'm kind of uh, figuring it out as I go along. But pretty much what you're doing in this step is obviously you're masking out the bit that you want to appear in your photo. You can take as long as you want for this, or a short, it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, these handles are pretty um, intuitive if you know how to use them. I'm, I'm slowly getting there, I promise. Anyways, fast forward, complete that, and boom. Then on the top, you now are pretty much done. You're gonna go to the second photo or the third photo and repeat the process. Because the mask exists only on the top timeline, uh, once the second photo appears underneath, it reveals the uh, entire photo, so you get a little little preview of what is coming. That's the whole effect that we've been trying to do. Here, just doing that this plane, and here I'm gonna go randomly like that, and I'm gonna add some feathering to this mask, because why not? I noticed that this photo will appear over the plane, so what I'm doing here on the top timeline is I'm going to drag the entire image downwards a bit. As you can see here, I'm just gonna round that off to minus 50 pixels on the y-axis. Now, that won't line up with the photo underneath, obviously, so we're gonna put minus 50 on the y-axis there as well, and that makes sure that they are all in position now. And as you can see, that is the desired effect. Now, how do we animate, just like the tutorial in Premiere Pro, how do we animate some of these? Let's go to the first or the second photo again. The first frame, go to your transform controls and click the keyframe button. And then you fast forward five frames, click the keyframe button again, click to the previous keyframe and drag that image down. And now you go from one keyframe to the next keyframe and that animates it. And you can repeat that process on the next photo as well. Here we are going to add keyframe at the first bit, then three frames later and another keyframe. Go back to the first keyframe and then manipulate the Y axis. So that comes swooping down. What else can you do? On that one, we can add a keyframe, go forward a few frames, another keyframe, go back to the first keyframe, have it move in from the left. And now that slides in and it completes the image. Uh, what else can you do? You can increase the scale, for example, of this uh, wave or this uh, water bit on the beach. Let's adjust the scale there by going to the first frame of that top one, hitting the keyframe button on the scale parameter, go forward a few frames, hit the keyframe button again, then go to the first keyframe and drop the scale down to zero on that. And then over the next three frames, that will grow to 100%. And you can animate rotation, scale, position, whatever you want like this. Just add two keyframes and then manipulate the first one. And that's it 